We all know today's Himalayan kingdoms, Nepal, and Bhutan as well as Tibet, but you know China and in between them a territory that is today a part of India. Saw the existence of an ancient kingdom that has been forgotten by many since it ceased to exist as an independent nation. Before knowing more about the kingdom please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon it will immensely help. The kingdom of Sim was established a long time ago in the year of 1642 and its territory was give or precisely take that of modern Sikkim. According to legend Kai Buma, a 14th century prince from the Mink House in Kay in eastern Tibet received a divine revelation instructing him to travel south to seek his fortunes. Eventually one of his descendants was successful in this quest and founded Sim's monarchy being consecrated as the first Chol or priest king of Sim. The king was appointed by the three great lamas of the region. Demonstrating the high importance that Buddhism has had even this far back in Buddhism lamas are essentially spiritual leaders. Perhaps the equivalent of a bishop or a cardinal in Catholicism. The name chosen for this new kingdom was Sim. Believed to be a combination of the limbo words Su meaning new and king meaning palace or house a fitting name for this new kingdom. Its relationship with its neighbors was always present and a big part of the way it developed throughout history. There was a history of both conflict and dependence and quite often they found themselves under the control of Indian empires Tibet Nepal Bhutan and even China. The British colonial empire for instance in 1700 Sim was invaded by the Baines successfully repelling them in 1717. The Nepalese invaded in 1791 the Gore Kingdom which eventually transitioned into modern-day Nepal invaded Sim again. The Chinese Qing Dynasty sent help to the defenders whose people were in part also forced to seek refuge in Tibet at the time equally under Qing influence. The involvement of China and India in Sim are crucial up to modern times. Another key player arrived just after Britain the British Raj was beginning to arrive in India and establish a great deal of influence through their colonial empire. Britain's relationship with Sim was positive most of all because it was negative with Gorkha. It's the old saying my enemy's enemy is my friend. Nepal and Bhutan had been continuing to invade and take parts of Sim ruling most of it for almost 40 years from 1775 to 1815. During this period almost 180,000 Nepalese migrated to Sim with the arrival of the British what was left of Sim was quick to ally itself to the East India Company prompting an even stronger Gorkha reaction and further invasions because of this and seeing the Gorkha as a threat to their regional influence as well as a block on their way to trade with the Qing and Tibet via land. The British went to war in what became known as the Anglo-Nepal War of 1814. The British through their East India Company fought alongside the kingdoms of Gualala and Sikkim. The areas onto which Gorkha was expanding the British Lad Alliance won and despite retaining its sovereignty the Gores had to see their conquered lands including in Sim renouncing all claims and becoming a British protectorate. But Sim wasn't that better off either sure they got rid of Gorkhas. The relationship with the British would soon turn sour as well shortly after the East India Company began taxing the region much to the dislike of the locals. Furthermore in 1849 a British expedition ventured into Sikkim Mountains without local authorization being detained by the Sikkim government. As a response the British military entered the territory and annexed their Dilling district into British India. This was in 1853 a second British intervention followed in 1888 to expel Tibetan forces from Sikkim. Tubnamal the ninth Chol of Sikkim looked to the Dalai Lama for spiritual leadership. During his reign the Tibetan government started to regain political influence over the small kingdom right after this the British officialized Sim status as a protectorate taking away much of its sovereignty. The British imperative in northeast India was to open the markets of Tibet and by extension China to their manufactured textiles tobacco grain tools and tea and to do this they needed a clear border on their map. So, they negotiated with the other strong regional power China in 1890 the Convention of Kolkata took place in it both sides recognized Sikkim as a British protectorate and established the border with Tibet. Oddly China negotiated on Tibet's behalf without consulting them. The British to renegotiate this with Tibet directly in 1904 despite this newly official protectorate status Sikkim sovereignty was gradually returned over the next three decades and it became a member of the Chamber of Princes. The assembly representing the rulers of Indian princely states in 1922 so it did have some regional importance still by 1950 with India's independent Sikkim became a protectorate of them instead. But this was initially not to Sim's liking in fact two years earlier in 1948 their executive council passed a resolution in the Indian constituent assembly stating that Sim and Bhutan as states were not Indian. Their future should be negotiated separately with Britain regarding independence after all they are precisely in between Nepal and Bhutan along the Ayman Mountains. 
two fractions emerged in Insim one that argued for independence and was pro-monarchy and another that argued for continued union with India after the British left identifying themselves with pro-democracy and anti-monarchy sentiments. The monarchy faction was mostly supported by the elite of the native Lepis and Ba while the democracy one held the support of the majority worker class most of which were Nepali. As a compromise upon Indian independence a new agreement was signed to establish a protectorate status for Sim towards India. They retained administrative autonomy, but India would control external affairs defense diplomacy and communications. They continued arguing towards independence using the significant Western media attention that they had at the time due to their king marrying an American woman even going to the point of demanding Darjeeling which they had lost to the British Raj back from India, but the two factions continued to exist. Meanwhile the pro-democracy faction demanded elections and greater representation for Nepalis in Sim which some stated continue to be discriminated against. They demanded it one man to one vote system because it seems that to maintain parity between the Boa Lepa minority 25% and the Nepalese majority 75%. A single Boa Lepa vote was equivalent to six Nepali votes. This seems to have been a consequence of British rule who had invited Nepali people to the region as a workforce in the development of Dilling. Also, as a way of counteracting Tibetan influence people marched on the palace against the monarchy in 1973 and by 75 the Prime Minister of Sim seemingly siding with the pro-democracy faction appealed to the Indian Parliament for Sikkim to become a state of India. The Indian army took over and disarmed the Chol Palace Guards holding a referendum in which 97.5% of voters supported abolishing the monarchy. Effectively approving union with India 20,000 Indian troops were stationed in the country during the referendum they therefore became a part of India as the 22nd state. But throughout this whole process of joining India something important was happening in parallel in 1958 China's communist forces invaded and annexed Tibet recovering the influence that the old Qing dynasty had had in the region. A significant border dispute began taking place between India and the People's Republic of China escalating into the China-Indian War of 1962 arguably triggered by India granting asylum to the Dalai Lama. But the main cause of the war was a dispute over the sovereignty of the Aksai Chin and the Arunachal Pradesh border regions Aksai Chin claimed by India to belong to Ladakh and by China to be a part of Xinjiang contains an important world link that connects Chinese Tibet and Chinese Xinjiang China's construction of this road was also one of the triggers of the conflict when the war took place Sim was already an Indian protectorate but not yet a full state opening up the doors for it to be a subject in the dispute as well after all they had also had some connections with the territory when they helped them defend themselves against Nepal centuries before. Especially considering that when of China's claims at this point had to do with the fact that according to them India was not respecting the borderlines established in that 1890 convention of Kolkata. They signed with a British Raj namely in the Sim section. Perhaps simply as a form of aggravating India but likely due to their desire of influencing them China stated. It didn't recognize India's control over Sim it seems the issue wasn't Sim itself just a part of it that they claimed as their own on their border but still they took the opportunity. The Chinese troops reached their claimed territory and declared a ceasefire effectively ending the conflict which has only seen some small border clashes since namely one Imam itself in 1967 when that referendum took place in 1975. China protested and rejected it calling it illegal, but they seem to have let go of this issue since 2003 to better relations between China and India in 2006. The Sykes-Iman Pass of Natal was opened to cross-border trade becoming the first open border between India and China. Historical trade post of the ancient Silk Road. India kind of exchanged its recognition of Tibet as being Chinese in exchange for China recognizing Sim as being Indian. But I'm not sure if this is true what I do know is that today Sim remains a part of India. It's a very mountainous area almost all of it is either mountainous or at least hills. The world's third highest peak Kanchenjunga is located there and fun fact the red panda is their state animal. Today it has six internal districts further divided into 16 subdivisions. Each of the districts is overseen by a state government appointee. The district collector who is in charge of the administration of the civilian areas while the Indian army has control over a large part of the state as Sim forms part of a still sensitive border area with China. Many areas are restricted to foreigners and official permits are needed to visit them. Sim's state GDP was estimated at $4.6 billion US in 2019 with a GDP per capita of $7,500. If they were still their own country their economy would only rank 170th being behind Burkina Faso but ahead of Liberia or even Bhutan. 
itself because of its hilly terrain and poor transport infrastructure they lack large-scale industrial bays they're mostly focused on agricultural production and more recently betting on tourism as a result state revenue has increased 14 times since the mid-1990s Sikkim is India's least populous state with 600,000 people most of them are of Nepali ethnic origin the native Sikhs consist of the Boas migrated from the K in Tibet in the 14th century and the Lepus who are believed to predate the Ba and are the oldest known inhabitants. Since 1891 with that British work invite Nepali were already the majority at over 50% with the remaining 45% being equally divided among Lepus Ba and Limbus. Due to these different ethnic groups the official languages of the state are Nepali Sikhs Lepa and English. When it comes to religion 68% are Hindu 27% Buddhist 3% Christian and only 1% Muslim. Today Sikhs population seems to not care for the former desire of regaining independence anymore. They benefit from some special rules granted to them by India upon annexation such as exemption of paying income tax although I'm not sure if this has since been repealed or the inability of foreigners to purchase land making sure it belongs only to Sykes themselves. Regardless of their origin but it's odd to see how their original population has since become a minority in their own country. The British aid triggered a series of events that led to the end of Sikkim sovereignty first as their own protectorate and then into Indians. Who would then come to fully annex them and so the initial goals ended up being pointless. If the British hadn't intervened it's likely they would today a part of Nepal having been successfully conquered by the Gorkhas unless some other regional power intervenes such as the Chinese. If so, who knows what would have happened perhaps it would today be a province of China instead of India but the likelihood of it being able to retain independence up to today was very low so that is the history of one of Asia's forgotten kingdoms Sikkim. I hope you like this information. To know more about such lesser known topics please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share like and comment. Your feedback is very important to us. Thanks for watching.